Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here to show you how to draft a pattern for and sew the sweet Japanese knot bag. There are a lot of different uses that you can come up with for this particular design, I'm sure. The purpose of today's video is twofold. I wanna show you how you can create your own paper pattern so that you have the confidence to size this project up if you like, as well as show you the order of operations for constructing this. This is one of those projects that if you don't go in the right order, it won't come together. So it's kind of like a puzzle and it is rather fun to make once you know the proper order. If you're not familiar, the Japanese knot bags have one short handle and then one longer handle. And the way they work is the longer handle gets tucked inside of that shorter handle. And then you carry the bag like this, or you can hook it on a hook or over a chair, a doorknob. They're very cute, quite practical, wonderful for children because there's no hardware or drawstrings, okay? So shall we get started making this sweet bag? All right, so I'm gonna show you how to craft the pattern for the smaller version, which measures seven inches across at its widest point, and then 11 inches from that longest handle, and nine inches from the short handle, and then you can easily use this method to size that up and make a larger knot bag for yourself. So for the small one, you're gonna begin with a piece of paper that's 12 inches tall by eight inches wide, and you can recycle a grocery bag, wrapping paper, butcher paper if you don't have bigger paper if you need and a true pinch tape two pieces of paper together and then cut it out to the 12 by 8 rectangle and the first thing you're going to do is fold that in half long ways so you have a 4 by 12 inch piece and we're going to begin working on the folded edge you will need a ruler and a pen to mark this up. The first mark that you're gonna make is one inch in from the fold, and then four and a half inches down on the fold. So this is like just connecting the X and the Y axes. And so just take your pen there and draw a soft angle to connect those. This is the neck line of the bag. So that center portion here. So you want a nice, soft, rounded edge. So don't be afraid there to come in a bit until you feel like that's a nice, soft edge. Okay. Then the next mark that you're gonna make is one and a half inches in from that top right hand corner and five inches down on the right hand raw edge there. Okay, and then we want to do the same thing. These are the outer angles here on this are the armholes and so again you want a nice soft angle there this kind of reminds me of a tank top if you can picture that and this does not have to be perfect it just can't be rigid so you want that nice swooping angle there and then the last angle that you need to put in is from the bottom right hand corner you're going to mark two inches on that bottom portion and two and a half inches on the right hand side and this is the bottom 
corner just to give the bottom of the bag that rounded angle. And same thing, you just nice, soft, swoopy marks. And then take your scissors and go ahead and cut. And then when you open this up, it should look like this. And what you wanna do is leave the long handle intact and then cut two inches off of the opposite side. And now you have your paper pattern here. And the next step is to get your fabric and you want to cut all of this fabric at one time. So the facing of the fabric is important. You want this just as it comes off the bolt or from the fabric store with the right sides facing out. And you can go ahead and stack up your interior and your exterior so you can cut all these layers at one time. Position your paper pattern on top of all four fabric layers. I like to pin mine in place. You could trace yours on there as well if you prefer. And then you need a pair of pinking shears for this project and that's because there are so many angles. The pinking shears essentially are like clipping the fabric. You've heard of that clipping at the corners and the angles. This bag really requires clipping all the way around. So pinking shears are a great way to accomplish that in a very simple manner. And you can cut all the pieces at one time. Now I have all four pieces cut out and they are identical because I cut them all at the same time. The arrows are going to be my interior and the feathers will be the exterior. So you want to take your like patterns and position those right sides facing. And then the first step is to sew across the top of those handles. And then you're going to go ahead and press those seams open. I have my seams pressed open. Now I want to align these same pieces, right sides facing. And I'm going to stitch just from the end of that little outer armpit around the base to the end of the opposite armpit. So just the barrel of this bag on each side. I am back stitching at the beginning and the end. I'm going to do the same thing for the exterior. I'm sewn around that barrel or belly of the bag. I want to turn the exterior panel right side out. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm going to fit that inside of the interior panel, aligning the short sleeves and the long sleeves. Okay, so once you have the top seams pinned and aligned, then you could just reach in there and straighten everything else up. The next step in the process is to stitch this neckline. And so this is a very tiny bag, so you just want to put that up on the machine deck, start with the long sleeve, and then work around. Make sure you're not catching anything in that that shouldn't be, and you're just stitching only this interior neckline. I've made it all the way around there. Now I want to turn this right side out and then tuck that interior inside of the exterior. See the bag taking shape there. Now what we need to do is fold these raw edges inward and press them so that we can top stitch these arm holes closed. So the easiest way to do that is to kind of separate the interior from the exterior and press them separately and then fold that back in and align. So if you take your fingers like this and fold it inward from those seams, the fabric will just naturally turn inwards and then you can press that flat and you're going to repeat the same process with the interior. Just grab on at those seams and then fold that inward and pull from those seams and then press that flat. And when both of those are pressed flat, then you can fold it under and it will align very nicely. Repeat that same thing at the iron for the larger armhole, which is much easier. Have those little armholes all pressed under and pinned in place. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around those then I'm going to come back and press this neckline nice and flat and top stitch that. On the outer armholes, this is a very narrow seam allowance there, so top stitch as close as you can to the edge. You can see what a narrow seam allowance that is. I've made it all the way around the little armholes. Now that those pins are out of there, I'm gonna press the neckline so it lies nice and flat and then top stitch all the way around that to finish. The project's complete. I wanna thank you for sewing with me. I am eager to see what you think of this process and if you feel confident enough to enlarge this pattern it certainly would be easier to sew a larger version of this because in my opinion the most challenging aspect is this tiny armhole here so the larger you make the bag the more room you're going to have to work on the machine deck there but nonetheless, it's good every now and then to take on a challenge. And I feel like this project is a bit of a challenge because again, you can see that if you go out of order, it will not come together correctly. So I will be back soon to share another inspired project with you. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful day, everyone.